I'm standing next to the statue of Yuri Gagarin, one of the first humans who uh, was in space, uh, dear viewers. And this marks uh, the April the 12th of 2021, marks 60 years uh, for this first human to be in space. And uh, of course, today we are bringing you a very special episode from this very special place, which is the Egyptian Space um, Agency here in Cairo, in Egypt, dear viewers. Uh, stay with us to know more about this very special agency. We'll be bringing you more interviews. Stay with us. Since 1960s, we have come to rely more and more on artificial satellites for a variety of needs. Navigation with mobile phones, daily weather forecasts, instantaneous worldwide communication, TV broadcasting, and a constant ability to record high-resolution images of vital regions are all examples of space technology that we have come to take for granted. Mainly I work on artificial intelligence and how we use all the data that we get from satellites and how we use that to, uh, to extract features and use this to like, help the country and whoever needs this data. Well, art artificial intelligence is when you, like, you have a data and you want to use this data of this current state of something and predict the future using this data. So for instance, if I know like, uh, in this region there are like, certain fish types uh, that in certain time frame uh, exist, I can use that to predict like where they're going to be tomorrow or the, the next month or the month after that. So like artificial intelligence is used to predict the future uh, using uh, historical data. Okay, what are the pros and cons of artificial intelligence? Well, it's very demanding computationally and it's expensive and it requires a lot of work. Uh, those are the cons. It, it uses, uh, you have to like extract features using very, very uh, hard techniques, uh, but the, the pros are that it, it's the future. It's, it's what everybody goes for and everybody's looking forward to, because you can you can change how the whole the whole country is, is headed to, towards using like just a couple lines of code. Uh, cons. Uh, the cons are what, what is expensive computationally and it's exp expensive uh, uh, manpower and it, it requires a lot of like data extraction. How you get the data, how you clean the data. To, to like abstract from it the, the features that you want. How, um, how do you do this process? Is it easy or is it difficult to face? Well, like you, you, there's a lot of uh, open source libraries and there's a lot of coding involved. Uh, usually there are, there are like steps you have to follow, but it really differs from, 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 from application to the other. But basically it's, uh, it, it's a long process and it takes a lot of steps and every step you need like, sp to be specialized in certain stuff. Okay, um, uh, what certain stuffs do you need to be specialized in? Well, you have to be really good at coding. You have to really be uh, really good at uh, data engineering and data extraction. You have to be able to understand what you want at the end of the day, what, what, what do you want from this data? You ha because feature engineering is like the, the, the main point you have to start from, and from there it, it, it develops. I graduated from Mechatronics, uh, HMS University. Uh, I'm, I'm a 2020 grad. 
so I'm just fresh out of the box. Okay, if you're just fresh out of the box, how did you get, uh, how did you get a job in this very special place in the Egyptian Space Agency in um, Cairo, which is uh, supposed to be making history, and it's, a, of course, a concept that, oh, it's a new dream that we're all looking forward for. Uh, I applied online. I applied I online? Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. Just, uh, could you tell me more about your, uh, what you went through because of the other graduates and the other youths your age, if they would um, uh, want to enroll in such an amazing place, how could they? Well, it was a gen general announcement. I found out on LinkedIn and I applied my CV. Uh, then I went through five uh, interviews, three were technical and two behavioral. Uh, one of them was a placement test, like a uh, written test, and the rest were like, uh, yeah, some were algorithms, some of, like, they just, they want to know, like, if you have what it takes to be under pressure, <laughs> because we're under a lot of pressure. You're under a lot of pressure. Uh, is it, um, uh, did you see the process, uh, Omar, easy uh, to enroll uh, in this place, or was it um, complicated to an extent, or was it uh, facilitated? No, it was, it was quite hard, actually. It was hard. There, 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 there were a lot of good candidates, and uh, I'm lucky to be chosen. Okay, your advice for other youths or other graduates that would like to enroll in this wonderful place, or the or place that makes history in our country, um, what do you tell them? Well, I think machine learning is the way to go because uh, everybody's looking towards that and everybody's focused on that. Like, everybody wants to know what artificial intelligence will do to this country and to the world, actually, because everybody is using it. So if you want a good position in a place like this, I think artificial intelligence is the way to go. Egypt will be capable of carrying out deep space missions to explore and use space resources. Shirok Bakir, Nile Cruise.